was really, really cool. Oh, we've got another non ferrous here. That is going to be something good. Should be able to pinpoint it. Come on, where are you? Lead to untold treasures waiting to be discovered. Marty Lagina's latest expedition takes us on a journey unlike any other, blending historical research with cutting-edge technology to uncover the secrets of the ocean floor. But as the allure of sunken riches draws us into its depths, we find ourselves entangled in a complex web of ownership disputes and legal battles, where the fate of discovered treasures hangs in the balance. What secrets lie hidden beneath the waves? And what challenges await those who dare to uncover them? The allure of discovering sunken treasure has captivated the human imagination for centuries. Yet, the moment a treasure is lifted from its watery grave, it often sparks a complex web of legal battles over ownership, intertwining the fates of treasure hunters, governments, and sometimes even nations. Marty Lagina's latest foray into the depths of the ocean to retrieve a long-lost treasure thrusts us into the heart of these complexities, echoing the challenges faced by many before him. The case of Bobby Pritchett, a seasoned treasure hunter whose discovery turned into a legal nightmare, serves as a case study highlighting the dangers that lie in the murky waters of treasure claims and governmental roles. When a treasure is discovered, the initial euphoria can quickly be overshadowed by the legal complexities surrounding its ownership. National laws, international treaties, and maritime salvage rights converge to form the labyrinthine legal framework that governs the fate of any discovered treasure in many jurisdictions. The law of fines and the law of salvage come into play, each with its stipulations and implications for the finder. The former grants ownership to the finder of abandoned property, while the latter rewards them for the recovery of property that remains owned by someone else. Governments often claim ownership of historic shipwrecks and their cargoes under cultural heritage laws, arguing that such treasures are part of the nation's patrimony and should be preserved for public benefit. This stance is supported by UNESCO's 2001 Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Cultural Heritage, which aims to safeguard submerged historical artifacts as cultural heritage rather than mere commercial property. However, the applicability of these laws and conventions can vary widely depending on the territorial waters in which the treasure is found and whether the countries involved are signatories to international agreements. Bobby Pritchett's ordeal epitomizes the legal entanglements that can ensnare treasure hunters. Following a significant discovery, after years of research and investment, Pritchett discovered a shipwreck believed to be laden with valuable artifacts and precious metals off the coast of Florida. His excitement was short-lived, however, as he found himself entangled in a legal battle that would consume years of his life and vast sums of money. In the shadowy depths off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida, treasure hunter Bobby Pritchett came across a discovery that promised to rewrite a chapter of maritime history. It's like Man, I can't believe it. We just found it. I mean, it's quite amazing. His find, a sunken treasure consisting of a marble obelisk and a 16th century bronze cannon engraved with the French fleur de l apostrophe A tilde registered, initially seemed to reinforce the Spanish dominance in maritime explorations of that era. However, this significant discovery soon became the epicenter of a contentious legal battle that underscored the complex web of maritime law, national heritage claims, and the relentless quest for historical treasures lying beneath the ocean's surface. Pritchett's discovery suggested more than just the presence of valuable artifacts. It hinted at the existence of a shipwreck of monumental historical importance. The initial assumption was that these artifacts belonged to a Spanish shipwreck, given Spain's extensive exploration and colonization efforts during the 16th century. However, the narrative took a dramatic turn when the Florida government, upon examining the distinctly French artifacts, posited that the wreckage could be none other than Latrinite, 
a vessel from a French fleet that had left France in 1565, with intentions of establishing a foothold in the New World. Latrinite was part of a larger narrative involving French Huguenots' attempts to colonize parts of what is now the southeastern United States. The ship, alongside others, was dispatched to support Fort Caroline near modern-day Jacksonville, Florida. However, the fleet met with disaster and Latrinite, along with its historical treasures, was believed to have been lost to the sea, its final resting place becoming one of the many mysteries that have tantalized historians and treasure hunters alike. The contention over the shipwreck's identity marked the beginning of Pritchett's legal and bureaucratic journey. The Florida government's assertion brought into play international laws and agreements concerning underwater cultural heritage. The discovery of what might be Latrinite was not just about the artifacts themselves, but also about the historical significance and ownership rights tied to them. According to maritime laws, shipwrecks can be protected as part of a country's underwater cultural heritage, meaning that the artifacts belong to the nation under whose flag the ship sailed. This legal framework set the stage for a complex negotiation process involving the country of origin, in this case France, and the country where the shipwreck is found. In this instance, the United States specifically the state of Florida. The involvement of French artifacts complicated matters further, introducing the possibility of repatriation of the artifacts to France, thereby stripping Pritchett of any claims to the treasure he had discovered. Pritchett found himself entangled in a nightmare of legal disputes and negotiations. What began as a thrilling discovery soon turned into a cautionary tale about the challenges and pitfalls of treasure hunting in the modern age. The legal battles underscored the delicate balance between the pursuit of historical artifacts for their monetary value and the preservation of cultural heritage. Moreover, the incident highlighted the often overlooked aspect of treasure hunting the ethical considerations of disturbing underwater cultural sites. While the allure of uncovering lost treasures is undeniable, it raises questions about the impact on historical sites and the moral responsibilities of treasure hunters. The story of Bobby Pritchett and the supposed Latronite shipwreck serves as a compelling narrative that navigates through these complex waters of maritime archaeology, treasure hunting, and cultural preservation. Bobby Pritchett's story is a cautionary tale for treasure hunters, underscoring the importance of understanding the legal landscape before setting off on a salvage operation. It also raises critical questions about the role of governments in the stewardship of underwater cultural heritage and the rights of individuals who risk their lives and resources to recover lost pieces of history. The saga suggests a need for clearer laws and more just frameworks that recognize the contributions of treasure hunters while ensuring the preservation and public accessibility of cultural heritage. The saga of the San Jose shipwreck in case is a captivating chapter in the pages of maritime history, symbolic of the allure, mystery, and contentious legacy that sunk in Teresa's carry. The San Jose, a Spanish galleon dubbed the Holy Grail of shipwrecks, met its fate in 1708 after a fierce naval confrontation with the British, laden with a cargo estimated to be worth around $17 billion in today's currency, comprising gold silver, and jewels, the ship's riches have lain undisturbed off the coast of Colombia, weaving a tale that straddles the fine line between legend and historical fact. The discovery of San Jose's final resting place reignited a complex web of legal and ethical debates, primarily concerning the rightful ownership of the sunken treasure. This dispute showcases a broader discussion on maritime salvage rights, the protection of underwater cultural heritage and the intersection of historical claims with modern legal frameworks. The case of the San Jose involves a triad of claimants, Spain, under whose flag the ship sailed, Colombia, within whose territorial waters the wreck was discovered, and the descendants of the Incan Empire from whom much of the treasure was initially looted. Spain's claim to San Jose and its cargo is rooted in historical sovereignty and maritime laws that often grant the country of origin rights to shipwrecks and their contents. However, this principle is increasingly challenged by evolving norms that recognize the jurisdictional claims of the nations where such wrecks are found. 
mainly when they lie within a country's exclusive economic zone. Colombia's claim is thus anchored in both its territorial sovereignty and its view of the shipwreck as part of the nation's underwater cultural heritage, which is protected under the 2001 UNESCO Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Cultural Heritage. The involvement of the Incan descendants introduces an ethical dimension to the dispute raising questions about the restitution of cultural properties and the historical injustices associated with colonialism and the looting of indigenous treasures. This aspect of the claim illuminates the broader debate on the rights of indigenous peoples and the return of cultural artifacts taken during periods of conquest and colonization. The legal battle over San Jose's treasure is not just a matter of national pride or financial gain, but also a test case for international law and its ability to navigate the murky waters of maritime heritage claims. The competing claims have ensnared the wreck in legal limbo, highlighting the inadequacies of existing frameworks to address the complexities of underwater cultural heritage and the need for a more just approach that balances national interests, historical injustices, and the preservation of global maritime history. Beyond the legal wrangling, the story of San Jose is a reminder of the human cost of such treasures. The ship sank with nearly 600 souls aboard, making the site not only a repository of untold wealth, but also a maritime grave, imparting the wreck with a heavenly quality that complicates efforts to salvage its contents. This duality underscores the ethical considerations that must guide the exploration and recovery of shipwrecks ensuring that the pursuit of treasure does not demean the memory of those who perished. The protracted dispute over San Jose also serves as a case study in the challenges of protecting underwater cultural heritage in an era where advances in technology have made the world's ocean floors increasingly accessible. As more shipwrecks are discovered, the need for a robust international consensus on their management becomes ever more urgent, one that respects the scientific, historical, and ethical values of such sites while acknowledging the legitimate interests of all stakeholders. The allure of cursed treasures, entwined with myths and legends that span across cultures and time, has always held a peculiar fascination for humanity. These stories, where fabulous wealth comes at a grave cost, weave together the thrill of discovery with the possibility of doom, creating narratives that are as captivating as they are cautionary. Among these, the legend of the lost Dutchman's mind stands as a typical story that continues to inspire treasure hunters, including figures like Marty Legina, who have made the pursuit of hidden riches their life's work. Cursed treasures are often at the heart of folklore, where ancient curses protect vast riches. These curses are said to bring misfortune, death, or eternal damnation to those who dare to disturb the hidden hordes. From the pharaoh's tombs in Egypt guarded by warnings of dire repercussions to pirate treasures cursed by their ill-gotten means, the notion of cursed wealth taps into deep fears and desires. It plays on the human tendency for greed and the universal warning that sometimes some things are better left undiscovered. The narratives usually involve a guardian spirit or a spell cast by the original owner, ensuring that the treasure brings no joy, only sorrow, to those who unearth it. These stories serve multiple purposes. They protect the treasures from would-be thieves, offer moral lessons on the danger of greed, and add a layer of mystique to the riches, making them even more desirable. The Lost Dutchman's Mine, supposedly located in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona, USA, embodies the archetype of a cursed treasure. The mine is named after Jacob Waltz, a German immigrant who allegedly discovered it in the 19th century and took its secrets to his grave. According to legend, the mine contains an enormous deposit of gold hidden away by the Spanish or early or indigenous peoples, protected by a curse that brings death to those who seek it. The fascination with the lost Dutchman's mine lies not just in its supposed riches, but in the series of mysterious deaths and disappearances that have occurred who have attempted to locate it. The uneven terrain of the Superstition Mountains, with its harsh climate and dangerous landscape, contributes to the mine's elusive nature. Yet, it's the tales of greed, obsession, and the ultimate price paid by those trapped by the curse that captures the imagination. Treasure Hunters 
drawn by the lure of the mind's fabled wealth, often find themselves confronting more than the physical challenges of the search. They deal with the psychological burden of the curse, a tangible reminder of the mind's deadly history. The legend of the lost Dutchman's mine has thus become a modern morality tale, a testament to the dangers of letting the lust for wealth consume one's better judgment. The enduring appeal of cursed treasures, exemplified by the lost Dutchman's mine, lies in their ability to evoke the fundamental human experiences of hope, fear, and the unquenchable thirst for adventure. These legends speak to the depths of our desires and the limits of our vanity, serving as mirrors to our ambitions and warnings of the potential consequences. For treasure hunters like Marty Legina, the allure of these mysteries is not merely the prospect of wealth, but the challenge they represent. It's the opportunity to pit one's wits and will against the legends themselves to navigate the fine line between ambition and folly. The quest for cursed treasures is thus a journey into the heart of the unknown, where the greatest discovery may not be gold or jewels, but a deeper understanding of the human spirit's resilience and its tendency for wonder. In delving into the myths and legends of cursed treasures, we confront our limits and the timeless allure of the unknown. The quest for hidden treasures has long been a narrative rich with tales of curses and supernatural guardians. However, in recent times, it has increasingly intersected with the realms of science and technology. This convergence has sparked a fascinating debate between adherents of the supernatural and supporters of rational, scientific explanations. Figures like Marty Legina, who navigate the complex world of treasure hunting, find themselves at the crossroads of this debate, utilizing modern technology and scientific methods to unearth secrets that have been cloaked in mystery for centuries. The advent of sophisticated technology has transformed the landscape of treasure hunting from reliance on shovels and intuition to using state-of-the-art equipment capable of probing the Earth's depths with precision. Satellite imagery, ground-penetrating radar and underwater drones have become indispensable tools in the treasure hunter's arsenal, allowing for the identification of potential sites without disturbing a single grain of soil. These technologies not only increase the likelihood of discovery, but also protect the integrity of historical sites, ensuring that valuable artifacts can be studied in their original context. Moreover, Scientific methods extend beyond the initial search to the analysis of found artifacts. Techniques such as carbon dating, metallurgical analysis and even DNA testing can offer insights into the age, origin and historical significance of discoveries, providing a wealth of information that enriches our understanding of the past. This scientific approach to treasure hunting underscores a commitment to accuracy and authenticity grounding the pursuit of long-lost riches in physical evidence and reason deduction. Despite the advances in technology and science, the allure of the supernatural persists, with many treasure sites claimed to be protected by curses or otherworldly forces. This belief in the supernatural has been a part of human culture for millennia serving as a means to explain the unexplainable and to imbue the natural world with a sense of wonder and mystery. The debate between the supernatural and scientific explanations for the challenges and misfortunes that often accompany treasure hunts, is not merely a conflict between belief and skepticism. It is a reflection of the broader human experience that includes both the known and the unknowable. On one hand, Scientific rationalism offers a framework for understanding the world grounded in observation, experimentation and evidence. It provides tangible explanations for phenomena that were once attributed to curses or magic, demystifying the process of treasure hunting and placing it within the reach of reasoned inquiry. On the other hand, the supernatural with its emphasis on curses and mystical guardians, speaks to the human capacity for awe and the recognition that not all aspects of our existence can be easily quantified or explained. Stories of cursed treasures resonate because they touch upon themes of hubris, respect for the past, and the acknowledgement of forces beyond our control. They remind us of the limits of human knowledge and the mysteries that still elude our grasp. A balanced view of this debate appreciates the contributions of both perspectives. Scientific methods and technologies enable treasure hunters to pursue their quests with greater precision and success, 
uncovering artifacts and sites that expand our historical knowledge. Yet the supernatural narratives that accompany many of these quests enrich the pursuit with a sense of mystery, and a reminder of the profound respect that the past demands. These narratives, whether rooted in fact or fiction, add depth to the treasure hunting experience blending the thrill of discovery with the contemplation of our place in the larger tapestry of history. In the pursuit of hidden treasures, the dichotomy between science and the supernatural reflects the dual nature of human curiosity. The desire to uncover the secrets of the universe through rational inquiry, balanced with an innate sense of wonder at the mysteries that remain. For treasure hunters like Marty Legina, Navigating this complex terrain involves not only harnessing the power of modern technology, but also engaging with the legends and lore that have captivated humanity for generations. In the end, the search for treasure becomes not just a quest for material riches, but a journey into the very heart of the human condition, where science and the supernatural coexist as complementary facets of our enduring fascination with the unknown. The pursuit of treasure inherently laden with visions of gold and priceless artifacts, raises pressing questions about the preservation of our shared cultural heritage, versus the human impulse to claim and commodify. On the one hand, the uncovering of a shipwreck or a lost city offers a tangible connection to our past, providing invaluable insights into ancient civilizations, trade routes and historical events. On the other hand, the act of extraction can sometimes strip these finds of their contextual significance, transforming them from cultural artifacts into mere commodities. The conservation ethic advocates for the protection and scientific study of these treasures in situ, arguing that their actual value lies in the stories they tell about our collective history. Conservationists emphasize the importance of careful documentation, preservation techniques, and, when necessary, the careful removal of artifacts for study or public display in museums. This approach not only ensures the physical preservation of the artifacts, but also maintains their historical context, allowing for a deeper understanding of the cultures and societies from which they originated. However, the allure of treasure often tempts individuals and entities to exploit these discoveries for personal gain. The commercialization of historic finds whether through the sale of artifacts on the black market, or the exhibition of treasures for profit, poses a significant threat to the integrity of archaeological sites. The extraction of artifacts without proper archaeological oversight can lead to the loss of critical historical data, as the context in which these items were found provides crucial insights into their use, significance and the people who made and valued them. The ethical dilemma extends beyond the immediate physical impact on the sites and artifacts. The question of ownership and the right to salvage or claim treasure touches on issues of national heritage, colonialism, and the repatriation of cultural properties. Many countries have enacted laws claiming sovereignty over shipwrecks and archaeological sites within their territorial waters asserting that these finds constitute an integral part of the nation's patrimony. However, disputes often arise when artifacts are discovered in international waters, or when the descendants of indigenous peoples lay claim to treasures taken during periods of colonization and conquest. The debate over conservation versus exploitation is further complicated by the advent of advanced technologies that have made previously inaccessible sites reachable. While these technological advancements offer unprecedented opportunities for discovery and preservation, they also increase the potential for exploitation. The use of deep-sea submersibles, drones, and satellite imagery has opened up the ocean floor and remote regions to exploration, making it important to establish international protocols and ethical guidelines that balance the quest for knowledge. With the importance of protecting our global heritage, collaborative efforts between treasure hunters, archaeologists, governments, and international organizations have emerged as a promising approach to navigating these ethical waters. Partnerships that leverage the skills and resources of explorers with the expertise of heritage professionals can lead to responsible discoveries that enrich our understanding of history without compromising the integrity of the sites. Such collaborations also facilitate the sharing of finds with the public through museums and educational programs 
ensuring that the treasures of the past become accessible to all, rather than being hoarded or sold to the highest bidder. In navigating the ethical waters between conservation and exploitation, the treasure hunting community is faced with a profound responsibility. The decisions made by individuals and institutions not only affect the fate of priceless artifacts, but also shape the legacy we leave for future generations. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of our past, we must remain vigilant guardians of our shared cultural heritage, prioritizing preservation over profit, and ensuring that the pursuit of treasure contributes to the collective knowledge and appreciation of human history. The conversation around conservation versus exploitation is not merely academic, it is a call to action for all who value the richness of our shared past. By championing ethical treasure hunting practices and advocating for the protection of archaeological sites, we can bridge the divide between discovery and preservation. In doing so, we honor the civilizations that came before us, ensuring that their stories endure in the tapestry of human history unaffected by the corrosive effects of exploitation. So what secrets do you think lie hidden beneath the ocean's depths, waiting to be discovered?